Hey everyone, in my other video linked to here, I showed how you could approximate the Mach number of an object in a supersonic flow by looking at its Schlieren photo. And I wanted to take one of those pictures that I used in the other video, in particular the cone in a Mach 2 flow, as you can see here, uh, and show another way to compare the Taylor McCall solution to the image by overlaying the resulting plot. So what I want to do is first to take this picture and I'm going to use the shock angle because we need that for the inputs to the Taylor McCall code. So this shock angle I've already laid it out here and you can see it's about 44.3 degrees. So if I go to my program and I run it and for the shock angle I put the 44.33 degrees, free stream Mach number of two and I run it. Then you can see now I have output here uh, a plot of what it should look like, of what this flow should look like. And what you can do then is do file, save as, and then instead of outputting as a .fig, you want to output it as output it as a .png or a JPEG or whatever. I'm not going to do this because I already saved one, but that's how you would save this image. And then what I want to do is in here, I want to open as layers, and I've already saved it, and this is where it is. And now I want to scale this down, so I want to make sure I have this selected. I'm going to press uh, Shift T, which is the scale. I'm going to hold down Control so it keeps the aspect ratio the same. And I'm going to keep scaling it down. And I'm going to press M to move it. And I only want this region here. I don't need the, all the other extra stuff. So what I'm going to do is going to use this Select tool here. And I'm going to just select this. This is what I want. I'm going to press Control C to copy, and then immediately Control V to paste. You'll see a floating selection over here. Click on it, right click, click to new layer, and then you can actually delete this. And so now we have this pasted layer here, but you can't see behind it, so we can change the opacity. So I'm going to change this down to about 50, and now you can see the image behind it. If I press M again, I can move this, and you can see that we're not quite at the right, it's not at the right uh, angle here. Uh, you can see that this one, the black behind, actually goes up to here, and this cone is actually here, so it's a little bit off. It's a little hard to see here. But if I start going like this, then you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So one of the ways that you can do this is to, if we zoom in a little bit, um, zoom out a little, actually I do Control shift j to make it fit the screen, then you can again change the, uh, change the uh, size here by scaling. And if I do something like this, and you can see we're still below, so I actually need to scale this up a little bit. So what I can do is Shift-T again, and I'm just going to move this up a little bit because it's symmetric about the center line. And so we are almost there. It looks like we're actually pretty close here, um, pretty close to the correct uh, wedge shape. So I'm going to increase it a little bit more just to try to see if it's that's about right. So now you can see as I zoom in and out that the that the cone shape matches. So this cone, black cone matches when I go like this. And you can also see that the shock shape or the shock angle actually matches pretty well on both the top and the bottom. So this is kind of a cool result. Uh, this back here doesn't matter. It's not going to match back here because you can see that there is another shock that comes off of this cowl here. Uh, so what you can also do is on this layer, if I wanted to, I could select and I'll say I'm going to select from here out to here and we'll just keep that. So I'm going to copy, paste to new layer and then I can switch this one off. And you can actually see here if I decrease the, oops, decrease this opacity that you can get a kind of cool overlay image um, on uh, on this image and it shows that the shock shape actually matches pretty well uh, based off of from the Taylor McCall conical flow theory. So that's a, an interesting application of, the, of this uh, of this method and it, it actually helps to look at it. Uh, so you can also do this, do this for the other uh, images that I showed as long as they are for conical flow and I'll be posting um, the videos for the rest of my Taylor McCall conical flow derivation series soon and also hopefully this code and the plotting of this uh, of the solution. So thanks for watching.